This is a presentation to help you with installing a package of bees. First, you'll want to have a good location already prepared. Good location would include facing south or east so that the bees get the early morning sun, hits the entrance of the hive so that it gets them up and flying early. The entrance shouldn't be facing a high traffic area like where pets walk or a sidewalk or anything like that. The hive should be off the ground. I use cinder blocks or a hive stand, about eight to 12 inches off the ground. And also prop up the back of your hive a little bit, maybe an inch, so that the water and moisture drains out the front of the hive. Your objective in the first year is to really build up the colony so that it's strong enough to get through the first winter. So the queen will be laying eggs and building up the bee population. At the height of the season, the queen will be laying up 2,000 eggs per day. The bees need some drawn comb for the queen to lay the eggs. The queen cannot lay the eggs without wax, and it takes a whole lot of sugar water for the bees to draw the comb. It takes about eight pounds of sugar syrup for the bees to produce one pound of wax. A yearly cycle for the colony includes being dormant through the months of November, December, and January, slowly increasing the population through February, March, all the way up to the peak in late June, early July. There are several stages of the larva development the queen lays an egg, it's an egg for up to three days, turns into a larva, that's up to nine days. The cell gets capped on day nine and from day 10 until day 21, it's capped under a cell developing and it emerges as a full adult bee. You can see the same stages right here, three days for an egg, it becomes a larva and it hatches out after 21 days. It's actually 24 days for a drone, which is a male bee. This is what a worker bee egg looks like at the bottom of a cell. Very small, smaller than a grain of rice, but standing up straight at the bottom of a wax cup. You can see several stages of development from egg to larva to capped brood in this slide. At the top, you'll see some small eggs that the queen has laid turning into larva they curl up into kind of a c-shaped larva and then they get capped the cappings look like leather you might not see this in your first year but this is what a queen cell looks like it's completely different from a worker bee cell or a capped drone cell This is what your queen is going to look like. Oftentimes there will be attendants surrounding the queen. She can be easy to find if you look for those attendants that are following her as well. The queens are often marked various colors, white, yellow, red, green, blue. This year that ends in a zero, they're marked blue. They're easier to find that way. And you know what year the queen was introduced into the hive. Queens live about two to three years for a productive life. This is what drone cells look like on the bottom. They're a little bit more rounded and raised and do not lay flat like worker cell cappings. This is what a frame would look like, very healthy looking frame, lots of capped brood. There's some pollen down below, some honey up in the corners. Typical hive components include your top cover, your inner cover, your western super with frames and foundation, a queen excluder, and a deep super with frames and foundation, and a bottom board. We recommend two types of feeder. One is the inside plastic feeder. This has little ladders for the bees to climb down to access the sugar water, and it replaces one of the frames in the hive. This is a top feeder. It goes on top of the inner cover. You set a box around it. Keeps drowning to a minimum. 
There are several different types of frames with foundation. Here's some different options. On the left, you'll see a pre-wired assembled wooden frame with, foundation, with uh, wires on it. The foundation is wired wax that you would put in there. In the middle, you'll see a wood frame with plastic foundation, and also on the right, a plastic frame and foundation. The bees pretty much take to any of these, and all options are good. Other parts of the hive, a mouse guard. You'll see that metal piece. You can install that over the entrance. And you can also use a wooden entrance reducer. For a brood chamber, you have two options. If weight is an issue for you, you can use Western supers or option one is deep supers. Those are nine inch deeps. You would start with one of those. When it's 70% full of bees, you add another deep. That'll give you 18 inches of brood chamber. Option two, you can use the six inch Western or medium supers. They're again starting with one, adding another box when they're 70% full, and then adding the third box once again when that box the second box is 30%, 70% full. Different types of tops, bottoms that you can use, and another optional piece called a slatted rack. The type of tops that you can use, wooden pine migratory or telescoping with a metal cover. You can use a migratory wooden bottom or you can use a screen bottom board. The screen bottom board does help with ventilation, and you could use that slatted rack in conjunction with the screen bottom board by setting it on top of the screen bottom board. Several different types of hive tools that you would want to have on hand. Some of the basics include a J-hook hive tool or a standard hive tool. You'll want to have a smoker and also a bee brush. Now we'll talk about package installation. In your package that you will receive are several components. You'll see that there's a can for sugar syrup in there. There's a queen cage that's in the package. There's about 10,000 bees in the package. There's about three to 4,000 bees per pound. The packages are made of wood. They have screen sides installing your package. You also get with your package that you pick up a gummy bear and a hive staple. And that is used to remove the cork from the queen cage. You will moisten the gummy bear, replace that cork with the moistened gummy bear. The bees will gradually eat through that in three to four days slowly introducing the queen's pheromones into the hive. You can see on the right side how to hang the queen cage in the hive. Put it about in the middle and hang it with the screen facing the long end of the hive. The bees will want to have access to the queen so that they can get used to her pheromone. At the bottom, you can see after taking out the sugar syrup can, you will just simply dump the bees into the hive on top of the queen cage and in the empty spaces. It's important to install your bees quickly. I would recommend installing them right when you get home with your package. If you're not installing the same day, keep spraying them with sugar water a couple times. The sooner the bees are in their new home and able to release a queen, they're gonna have a higher survival rate. And if you do need to store them for a day, keep them in a cool place, such as a garage. For a sugar syrup, we recommend a one-to-one -one ratio, white granulated cane sugar with some warm, hot tap water. Just keep stirring until it's mixed up and stops crunching. Also, like we talked about, some of the essentials for installation, you'll want to have that gummy bear handy so that you can replace the cork in the queen cage. The hive staple is to take the cork out. 
you want to have a hive tool available so that you can remove the can from the package and then a spray bottle you'll want to mist your bees a couple times before installing them this just keeps them preoccupied some notes to remember gently position the frames back in the hive they'll settle into position as the bees move also the bees are going to cluster near the top around the queen cage you can kind of set the top on at an angle and then let the bees kind of settle so that you don't crush them no need to smoke the bees when you install the package checking your new hive in about three to four days you'll want to just have a brief check to make sure that the queen has been released from the queen cage after about three more four more days you might want to go in and start checking to see if there's any eggs that are being laid signs that the queen is laying is eggs larva and you may notice that there's being pollen being brought into the hive from the forager bees it's very critical that if your queen is not laying after nine to ten days that you give us a call managing your hive in the first three to six weeks they're going to be using a lot of sugar water you want to use that frame feeder or the top feeder and just keep feeding them sugar water for the first 30 to 45 days they need that sugar to build up wax remember to keep checking for different stages of brood eggs larva you don't necessarily need to see the queen but it's important to note that there is various stages of bee development in there eggs larva and cap brood when the first brood chamber is 70 percent full it's time to put on the second box this will be at about four to six weeks the beekeeping calendar you'll notice that there's a lot of buildup in march april may june that's when the honey flow is on sometime around mid-july is when the blossoms stop and the honey flow stops and this is the time that you want to treat for mites varroa mites are a problem in every single hive and you will want to treat in july you may want to test first and we'll show some good options at the end where to go to look for videos on how to treat and how to test some good options for the fall include thymol which is temperature sensitive up to 105 degrees some other good information is the residential beekeeping guidelines for the state of oregon you can go to their website at residentialbeekeeping.org another great resources the honeybee health coalition they have a great section on tools for varroa management including videos on how to treat your bees using different types of varroa mite treatments they also have a best management practices booklet that includes best practices and it's very well written I also recommend a local blog honeybee suite there's great information for Pacific Northwest beekeepers also some good periodicals bee culture magazine and American Bee Journal we wish you much success as a beekeeper have fun and enjoy the adventure